Welcome to the Pioneer School. This is lesson number 20 out of 20 lessons. So this is the last lesson and I really look forward to share this word with you and somehow send you out. Say goodbye at the same time or say see you later. And I believe this word is going to be a blessing for many of you. It's going to help you to come in and bear a lot of fruits in your life. God bless you. Welcome to the Pioneer School and welcome to lesson number 20. This is the last lesson out of these 20 lessons, but um, it's not going to stop here. We're going to continue with other things in the future and you're going to hear about that later. But this time, right now, is the last lesson out of these 20 lessons. And I look forward to share this word with you. And I just want to see, say to you that this has been an amazing journey for us. When we started with lesson number one, we didn't have any idea that this is going to explode the way it has exploded. We are more than 3,000 people who have signed up, up for the Pioneer School now. There is many thousands out there who is following the Pioneer School who is not yet signed up. The Pioneer School has been translated and getting translated to many other languages so people in the future can see the Pioneer School with subtitles on, on their own language. And it's coming out to thousands of thousands of people. And so many lives is getting changed because of the Pioneer School. It, it, we have seen thousands of people get healed the last half year because of the Pioneer School. We have seen so many people save baptism, baptism, water and Holy Spirit because of the Pioneer School. The kingdom of God is growing. And I'm so excited about this because it's God who's doing something. God is doing something new and we can be part of it. And I want to start reading three testimonies I got the last two days. And it was just three testimonies out of many testimonies I'm receiving every day. And I want to read this testimony because I want to encourage you to continue spreading the Pioneer School. Because this testimony is only there because you have talked about the Pioneer School or talked about the teaching to other people. Because you have shared it on Facebook. So maybe one of these testimonies is one of the ones who have heard it from you. So this is a way we can all bear fruit by spreading the word. And I encourage you to continue spreading the word. Have you got blessed through this Pioneer School? Then do what you can do to get it out to other people. Because it's changing life. The word of God is changing, changing life. And one of the person wrote this. Torben, my life have changed. And this is what I like. I like when people start writing that. My life have changed. I just prayed for my 19 years old neighbor and her 11 years old sister and they both got healed. I was not expecting it, so I keep telling them not to lie but to be honest. But they were healed. She was so surprised, it was the first time she experienced that. So she in many ways have not expected it, but it happened because she went out on the word of God. And then she continued, I prayed for the first one about five times before she was completely healed. And this is something this person has learned from the pioneer school. We need to learn not give up. If things don't happen first time, then don't give up. Continue, 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 continue. And she there did not only get kickstarted, she started to say my life. God changed. 
Why? Because before what she had read about was theology. It was religion. But when she acted on the word, it became a life. Then it was not only religion anymore, it became alive. She saw the power of God working through her. She saw that the word is true. Everything is true. When Jesus said, go out, lay the hands on the sick, they're going to get healed. Then it's true. But it's not only that there's truth. Everything in the Bible is the truth. So everything we can experience when we act on it. And she is so happy and she just thanked for, for the teaching and the pioneer school and everything. Another guy who wrote to me was a man who just got saved through the pioneer school. And I think it's so interesting what he's saying because I believe there is thousands or thousands or thousands of people out in the churches who in many ways is like him. And we need to get the pioneer school, the teaching out to them also, the word of God out to them. Listen to this interesting email I got. It was yesterday. I want to thank you. I got saved for real after listening to you. I had a terrible addiction to porn and I had even put myself up an, at adult dating sites trying to find women to have sex with. Then I listened to your message about that if you are living in habitual sin, you don't even know God. So I got convinced and I repented of every sin I could think of. Then I heard your teaching on baptism that it wasn't just a symbol, but it was essential to wash away your sin. So I did not have anyone to baptize me, so I baptized myself. Then I asked God for a real baptism with the Holy Spirit. Because I thought that I, I thought I had it because I spoke in tongues. But I thought that if I was not even saved, then it must be have a false experience. So I prayed to receive it for real. And then when I spoke in tongues, it was different than it was before. <laughs> now I fear God, and I have a fear of God. I hate sin and have such a desire of holiness. This is just amazing testimony. <laughs> Here we has a, have a person who believes he's a Christian, but he continues living in sin. But he, through this simple teaching, saw that he could not continue living in sin. He saw what repentance was with us, what with us spoke about in Lesson 7. So he saw that he needed repentance. Then he continued and saw that he needed to get baptized, and he baptized himself. And then he got baptized with the Holy Spirit, and his life is changed. Now I don't encourage people to baptize themselves. I encourage people to be baptized of other people because we need each other. We need fellowship with other believers. And I think it's so good to do it that way. But it's so interesting to hear his testimony because how many people out there in the churches is not sitting there right now and believe they are Christian, but they need a deep repentance. They believe they are Christian, but they need the baptism in water. They need, believe they are Christian, but they need to get filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Pioneer School is helping people to see the truth and getting saved. The Word of God, we need to preach the gospel, not only to people outside church, also people inside church. Another person wrote to me, Thank you for the encouragement your ministry has been to me and my friends. My friends and I just pray for a woman on the street who have a back shoulder who was immediately healed. My friend also met a man and his unbelieving wife and daughter. We talked to him, you know, we talked to them, and we got to pray for the wife. She would not tell us what her health problem was, but after we prayed for her, she said that she felt absolutely wonderful. 
We also performed a baptism seven weeks ago for somebody who just became a believer. The Holy Spirit is really at work all over the world and it's very exciting to witness and to be a part of. But maybe this testimony is there because you helped to share the Pioneer School, because you spoke about it to your friends, because you spoke about it to people in your church. So I want to encourage you in this last lesson do everything you can to spread this. Let it come out to other people so we can see so many more testimonies like these three persons I've just heard about. And this is just some of the things I hear about. What about all the rest I don't hear about? So I encourage you that the Pioneer School is changing life. And it's changing life because of you. Together we can do a difference. And I want to work with you. I want to help you. I need you also. We need each other. And then we can see a change in the whole world. Because it's happening right now. Our movement is happening. Something new is happening. I'm going to talk a little about that today in the last lesson. Before I'm going to start, I would like to pray. God, we thank you for everything you are doing. and We thank you for this opportunity with the Pioneer School. God, it was your idea, God. And we thank you for the life that has been changed, God. God, I pray for this last lesson that you will help me to share your word. And I pray for everybody who has seen this, that you will open their eyes, their ears, their hearts, so they are going to receive this message, God. God, and it's going to change their life, God. God, we thank you for everything you are doing in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I'm so excited for what God is doing. God is doing amazing things. And, and if I can explain it, it's like a movement there is starting. It's the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is spreading all over the place. And we are seeing it right now. I want to start with showing you a video. It's a video I have on my YouTube channel. It's a guy who has made a video. You see a young guy who's dancing and suddenly other people come and join him because they want to dance with you, you know, with him. And the video is about two things. It's about leadership and it's about how to create a movement. And um, the guy who have made the video, he's speaking over the video and doing some teaching about leadership and creating a movement. But there is so much more in this video and I want to uh, let you see the video now and listen to what he's saying because it's so good what he's saying. And afterwards I want to talk a little more about this video. So it's only three minutes long but just see this now. It's an amazing movie. I love it. If you've learned a lot about leadership and making a movement, then let's watch a movement happen start to finish in under three minutes and dissect some lessons. First, of course, a leader needs the guts to stand alone and look ridiculous. But what he's doing is so simple, it's almost instructional. This is key. You must be easy to follow. Now here comes the first follower with a crucial role. He publicly shows everyone else how to follow. Notice how the leader embraces him as an equal. So it's not about the leader anymore. It's about them, plural. Notice how he's calling to his friends to join in. So it takes guts to be a first follower. You stand out and you brave ridicule yourself. Being a first follower is an underappreciated form of leadership. The first follower transforms a lone nut into a leader. If the leader is the flint, the first follower is the spark that really makes the fire. Now here's the second follower. This is a turning point. It's proof the first has done well. Now it's not a lone nut and it's not two nuts. Three is a crowd and a crowd is news. A movement must be public. Make sure outsiders see more than just the leader. Everyone needs to see the followers because new followers emulate followers, not the leader. Now here come two more people, then three more immediately. Now we've got momentum. This is the tipping point and now we have a movement. As more people jump in, it's no longer risky. If they were on the fence before, there's no reason not to join in now. They won't stand out, they won't be ridiculed, and they will be part of the in crowd if they hurry. And over the next minute you'll see the rest who prefer to stay part of the crowd, because eventually they'd be ridiculed for not joining. <laughs> 
And ladies and gentlemen, that is um, how a movement is made. <laughs> so let's recap what we've learned. If you are a version of the shirtless dancing guy, all alone, remember the importance of nurturing your first few followers as equals, making everything clearly about the movement, not you. Be public, be easy to follow. But the biggest lesson here, did you catch it? Leadership is over-glorified. Yes, it started with the shirtless guy, and he'll get all the credit, but you saw what really happened. It was the first follower that transformed a lone nut into a leader. There's no movement without the first follower. See, we're told that we all need to be leaders, but that would be really ineffective. The best way to make a movement, if you really care, is to courageously follow and show others how to follow. When you find a lone nut doing something great, have the guts to be the first person to stand up and join in. Yeah, it's amazing. It's so amazing. And this is showing what God is doing right now. I, I, every time I see this movie, and I see when people start to run in. Now it's not only a few, now we have momentum. And people are running in for every place because they want to be part of it. Right there is where we are right now. Right there is where we are right now. Now we have momentum. Something new is happening. I can see it in Denmark. I can see it all over the place. A few years ago, we were only a few people who was dancing, who was doing this, doing this simple thing. But now it's like it's spreading. Everybody wants to be part of it. Everybody wants to join it. They will not be left out. They want to be part of what God is doing. And this is where we are right now. And I want to say about this movie that why did this guy help start this uh, movement? He did it because what when he was dancing, it was a very simple dance. It was a dance, not something beautiful. He was just standing there. So everybody for, who saw that thought that, hey, I can do that better. I can be part of this. It's no problem. If this guy was dancing really beautiful and was an amazing dancer, nobody would stand up, run out and dance beside him. No. Everybody would just look at him and think, whoa, I can never do like this. And this is what the problem in the church today. We have made a church today where ministry had become for a few select people with a special gift. And they are so beautiful in the way they use the gift. So every other is sitting in a church and saying, whoa, I cannot do this. But if only a few people who are doing it, we are never going to see the kingdom of God growing. We are never going to see a movement. So that's why we need to come away from the professional church building way where you have to be a pastor and have to have an education and have to have a platform and have to have a big church with 500 members and building and everything. No, we need to come back for this, away from this. Why? Because if I ask you, can you do that? Can you start a church with 500 members and do those things? Most of you will say, no, I cannot do it. But when we go back to what Jesus has called us to, can everybody do that? Yes. Where everybody, man, woman, old, young, can pray God to send out workers and can go out themselves and find that person of peace. Pray God to lead them, find that person. And when they find that person, then they let them to Christ. Then they talk to them, show them how to repent, baptize and walk, baptize Holy Spirit, and then they help them to do the same. Every Everybody can reach somebody. Everybody can do this. And this is where we see the movement. This is where we see the kingdom of God growing. Maybe you in your area, in your country, in your city, feel that you are really alone. Like this dancing boy, whole alone, dancing there. I just want to encourage you, continue dancing. 
Continue doing the things. Continue obeying Jesus. Because then you're going to see the first one join you. And then you are not uh, alone anymore. Now you are two. And then you are going to see one more join you. And then you are three. And now it's, it's not about you. It's about the movement. It's about the kingdom of God. It's not about you and me. It's about the kingdom of God. And then you are three. And then you become four. And then you become five, six, seven. And, and suddenly you create that momentum where more people see it and more people want to join. And suddenly people are coming in from everywhere because they want to be part of it. People who before were sitting in a church looking at you, laughing at you and say, who are you? Why are you doing this? This is crazy. No, come in and sit down with us. Those people who before was laughing at you, when they start to see what is happening, they want to join you. And this, you see in a video, it's not just a video. It's not about a guy who stands. It's about the kingdom of God. Because this is what I'm seeing here. This is what my friends is seeing. In the beginning, there was only a few people, but now it's changing. It's changing like people every day is joining. And I want to encourage you, take the video with the guy who's dancing and use that to be encouraged to continue. Also, if you're the only one who's doing it right there, find the first one and then you're two and then you're three and then you continue. And it's so interesting if you look at movement through the history. Most movement, every movement almost, have started by lay people, by people who don't have an education. Not professional people, but people who were searching God and who was living for God and who just want to do it. There were those people who were spreading the movement in the beginning. And they were spreading like wildfire all over the place in the houses around the cities. Why? Because it was just going like a wildfire. But then the one who somehow started the movement, worked with it, they start to know, no, no, we need to control it. We need to give people the right education and the teaching. And they start to organize it. And there the movement stopped. The grow stopped. And I want to encourage you, don't put it in a box and start to organize everything. Just let it go out there. Let it just go wild and let Jesus build his church. We are called to do those things and Jesus will build his church. Don't focus on all the details. Relax and do the simple thing Jesus has called you to. There is, it's all about discipleship as I've been talking about before also. And I want to say 2 Timotheus 2.2, Paul is saying something. He said, what you have heard from me, entrust to faithful men who are able to teach and who will be able to teach other also. So Paul said to Timotheus, what you, Timotheus, have heard from me, you teach entrust other faithful men who's able to teach other. So we are talking about four generations. I want to say the same with you when it comes to this teaching. What you have heard from me, entrust other faithful men who's, who again is able to teach other. Because this is where things are growing. And I can say when it comes to the kickstart point that it's really exploding that way. I was in Sweden a short time ago, and in Sweden there was a guy who got kickstarted, and he was really on fire. You have just seen sick people get healed, and he has shared the gospel for the first time like this. And he was really on fire. And then I saw something. I saw that he was kickstarted by somebody I have not met who was kickstarted by my friend people who was kickstarted there. And I took everybody beside each other, and I said, can you see it? This is what the word is talking about. I have kickstarted him, who have kickstarted him, who have kickstarted him, and so on and so on. And this is spreading in four, five, six, seven generations in very, very short time. And it's not only the kickstart part, it's everything we need. When we, everybody learns 
Those simple things Jesus are coming with in Luke 10. Finding a person of peace. Seeing them get saved, help them, and now you are two person going out finding person peace, and then you are four person, then you are eight person. When everybody start to do these simple things, in very short time, we are seeing a multiplication, a growth like never, never before. Because this is what we need to do. We need to focus on what God has called us to. And we need to, like Paul is saying, we need to find faithful men. Faithful men, faithful women. We can entrust this and then help them to teach other. Who help them to teach other. Who help them to teach other. Who help them to teach other. And so on, so on in the word is the word of God exploding. And Sweden, I met another guy, Dirk Kim Blessing. I have never met him personally. I have only uh, on Facebook and seen his video. But my friend Peter, who I kickstarted, have kickstarted him. And he's like so amazing. The last year, he has seen over 1,500 people heal. And he has trained many other people. And is that what, this is the way the kingdom is spreading. Try to imagine... You find one person you train. This person is good soil, is good ground. I'm going to talk about that today. So he bear a lot of fruit. He find other people who's good ground, who bear a lot of fruit. And, and imagine out of one person, 1,500 people have got healed the last year. And he's training other, who's training other, who's training other, who's training other. And we are seeing now a movement going all over the world. The kingdom of God is spreading. I want to say it's not only kickstarting. Kickstarting is learn to heal a sick priest and cosmic is part of it. But when people have learned this, I've been talking about the last two times, three times. When people get this and do it, we don't need many generations before the world is totally changed. Yes, it's true. The Bible says in the end time, many people are going to fall away. And we are seeing that inside the churches. There is a big falling away in the churches today. To be honest, many people who come in church today are not truly saved. They are not because we have compromised so much in the gospel. It's, it has become tra uh, religious, it be, uh, tradition, it has become religious activities. They are not truly saved. They need salvation. <laughs> But outside the church, there is a movement that's going on and is exploding in every country. But I'm going to continue now. I'm going to continue and talking about how we find the faithful man and bear fruit. How we find the good ground, the good soil and it invest in that and then see a lot of fruits happen. Okay, I'm going to continue now. I'm going to look at Mark chapter 4, where Jesus is coming with a parable of a man who saw the seeds. And in Mark 4, I encourage you to read it yourself also. In Mark 4, he said that there was a farmer, a, a sower, a farmer who went out to sow some seed. And this is what we are called to. We are workers in the kingdom of God. We are called to go out to sow seeds, the seed of God, the word of God. And when he saw the seed, the seed fall four different places. One was, I have it here, fell along the path. And the birds came immediately and took it away so it didn't bear fruit. The other one, some other thing fell on rotty ground. But it, because there was only a little earth, soil, it didn't go deep, and when the sun came, it died, and it didn't bear fruit. Other again fell among thorns. So it grew up, but because it was among thorns around it, it grew up together, and it died, and it didn't bear fruit. But the last one fell on good ground, and it bare fruit. 60, 30, 60, and 100 
fault. And there is so much in this parable Jesus is coming with here. And when he explained this parable to the disciples, first time he just talked about it, and, and they, when they were alone, they didn't understand it. And Jesus said, do you not understand this parable? How can you then understand all the other parables? Because this parable is somehow the secret to understand how the kingdom of God is growing. And it's a really important parable. So then he started to explain what this parable was meaning. And he said, the one who saw the word, in the sower who saw the word, the one who fall a along the path, it was the one where Satan and came, he and Mili came and take away the word that was sown in them. And because Satan came and took the word away, it didn't bear fruit. And this is what we are seeing today. It, we are seeing today that we are sowing the, sowing the word of God in people's life. We are talking to them. We are sharing it. But it's, sometimes it's like immediately you have shared the word. It's like... Phew, Satan come away and steal it, so it don't bear fruit. But there's also other, the rocky ground. This is the one where it lands, but when tribulation and persecution arrive at court of the word, immediately they fall away. And this is also what we see. We see people who receive the word, they're glad, they're happy, they've just received the word, and then they experience persecution for the family and the friends and what happened. And because of the persecution, they fall away and don't bear fruit. The other one we have here is the one who received the word, but the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desire of other things enter in and making it unfruitful. So the cares of this world, deceitfulness, riches, and loss for other things go in so it don't bear fruit. And then the last ground. This is the one who hear the word, accept it, and it bear fruit. 30 60 and 100 fold. And there is so much to say about these verses. I want to say in the beginning, how much is 30, 60 and 100 fold? It's not 100% we're talking about, it's 100 fold. So I have one seed, I sow that one seed and it became 100 seed or 60 seed, or 30 seed. If I change that to percent, he's talking about a growth, 3,000%, 6,000%, or 10,000%. If we have one seed, and that one seed become 100 seeds, then we have a growth, 10,000% growth. And if you see it that way, it's like even more clear that, whoa, it's a lot. It is. If you was a farmer now, and you have some seeds, and you want to sow that seed, and you know by experience that there is three, four, and four different grounds, and there is only one ground who bear fruit, but not just little fruit, 3,000, 6,000, or 10,000 percent, what will you do? You will of course take what you have and focus as much as possible on the good soil. And this is what we need to do. We need to not be afraid to let the bad soil be. If people are not willing to pay the price, you don't need to run after them your whole life. 
There was a rich young ruler who came to Jesus, and Jesus said something to him, and he was not willing to pay the price. Jesus didn't turn around and went to him and say, hey, 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 I, I didn't mean it. No, you, you don't have to. No, I didn't mean it. Just come. You don't have to offer anything. You can just come here in my church. Everything is okay. You don't need to offer anything. Jesus didn't do that. But we do that in the church today. Most of the church today is built the way that people don't need to experience persecution. So just be here. Don't need to go out. It's dangerous. But just be here. We are so secure. And they don't need to pay anything to follow Jesus. Like, it's okay. You can live your own life. You can, you can do everything you want at the same time and follow Jesus. Like believe in Jesus. This is what we are saying. And then we don't, have, we don't know why we are not seeing any fruit in the churches. Because we are focusing on the wrong, wrong ground. We need to find the good ground and focus on that because those few people bear a lot of fruit. Like my friend Peter I talk about in Sweden, he had borne a lot of fruit. And one of the guys, Dirk and Blessing, he had bared a lot of fruit. And I can say it like this all over the world, that very often it's a few people in the beginning who bear a lot of fruits. I don't know what ground you are. We are all called to bear fruit. I'm going to talk a little about that because there is something you need to see here that's very, very interesting. Let's look at it another way. Let's say there is those four grounds and there, is, there are only one who bear fruit. So this is from the beginning, one out of four bear fruit. So from the beginning, there is 25% chance to bear fruit. 25% chance to bear fruit. The first ground is the one who hear the word, but immediately the word is stolen. Let's talk about you and me, our life. Is that us? No, I don't think so, because we are here, we hear the word, we believe in Jesus, and this is not us because we know, have the word inside of us. So now there's only three grounds left. So now we are talking about 33% chance to be the good ground who bear fruit. The next one is the one who experienced persecution. I don't know with you, but I have experienced persecution. When I got saved, the first thing that happened was my family was against it and I lost my job and a lot of things happened. So I have tasted a little persecution or some persecution because of that. And I believe many of you have also experienced some kind of persecution for family and friends and, and people at work and other places where but that persecution have not done that you have fallen away. You are still here. You are still with us. You are still confessing Jesus. So this is good. So you survived that. So now there is only and there's fifty percent chances to bear fruit. Now it's fifty fifty. <laughs> so there is only one hindrance we have to be careful of. And if we survive this hindrance, we will be the one who bear good fruit. But if I said in the churches today, there is one thing you have to be careful of. <laughs> really, many people are thinking of big sins like homosexuality, drugs and big things like, oh, I have to be careful of this because this hinders me in bearing fruit. Of course, we should keep away from those things. But this is not what Jesus says here, that this is those things. No, Jesus is saying something different. He's talking about the love of this world. He's talking about the love of money, the deceitfulness of riches. He's talking about the longing, the desire to do other things. This is what we need to look 
to, to not be part of. This is where we need to have our eyes open so we are not being deceived. I know more people who have fallen away, who have not bear good fruit because they got a new house, they got a new car, because they want to have that education, they want to go on holiday that way, they want to do a lot of things. And because of that, they have not bear fruit. I want to talk a little about that because I know there is so many people out there who want to follow Christ, who want to obey Jesus. But the problem is that they don't have time for it. Especially in the Western world, we don't have time. We need to work a lot, we need to do a lot, we need to work and work and work and we don't have time. I want to say that everybody has the same time. Everybody has 24 hours each day. It's not that you don't have time, but it's what do you use your time for? How do you use what God has given you, the 24 hours? And there is one thing that is really stealing our time and killing the church today. And this is the love of money, the desire of being like everybody else. We are in the world, but we are not part of the world. And I want to tell a little about our journey there, because since I got saved many years ago, I had a desire to follow God, to serve Jesus, to live just full time, and just go out and do what God has called me to. But like many other persons, I start with like, okay, we also need a house and we want to buy a house, because I could see that my friends, the, those people around me who are the same age as us, they start to have a house and because they have a house, they like have a free value in the house and, and we are just living cheap for rent all over the place. And, 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 and I start to lost after the same thing they have. The people in the church, I, I wanted to have the same thing. And they ended up a few years ago that we bought a house. And we bought a car, beautiful car, and to be honest, it was not us who owned it, it was the bank. But we got it, and it just killed a lot of things in us. Because suddenly we need to work more, we need to need more money each month. And it started to create a lot of things in us. And suddenly we need to use a lot of time on fixing the house and the car and the money and the work and everything. And I came into a life like many other people. I came home, I was tired, I was laying at the sofa and I was just watching TV. I didn't have more energy because I've used all my energy on the job so I could pay for the house, pay for the car and pay for everything. And I was there. At that time I was there. But then God started to deal in us and we went through a long journey. <laughs> we went through a desert period where I saw that this the house, the car is nothing. It has no value. It's not kingdom minded. It has no value in eternity. I cannot take it with me. And I saw that suddenly those things was killing my time. So I could not do the other things God had called me to. And through that journey, God took us through. Me and my wife went did something really radical. We changed everything. We got rid of the car, rid of the house, and then we moved to a small apartment with three kids. But there I got something I didn't have before. I got more time. I got time to obey God, time to seek God. And, and, and we started our journey and later we moved to another apartment, a basement. And, and at one time we were living with three kids in a basement, 65 square meters. And it was, to be honest, it was hard. It was really hard because 
all my friends and people in the churches, they, they was living like, whoa, they have all things. And we were just living in a small basement. But we have something they didn't have. We have time. Time to seek God. Time to obey God. And it was hard in the beginning. It was really hard to live so different from the rest of the world. But out of there, a new life started with God. And then God, he later blessed us. And now we have rented a house, the beautiful place, nice place. But it's not the house who own us. It's us who have the house. The house is not a burden anymore. It's just a blessing. And, and we just have it a few years and then we move again because it's not ours. We don't care. It's, it's God's. Everything we have belongs to him. But I want to say that the Bible, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and the rest will be added to you. I believe this is something we have got wrong in the church today. We are first seeking all the other things. And we don't have time to seek the kingdom of God and do God's will. But Jesus is taking it opposite and say, Seek first the kingdom of God, do his will, and then everything will be added to you. Then it will come later as a blessing, but then it don't own you. You don't have the love for it. A house is just a house. We just need a car. It's just something we need to drive in. It's not something that owns us. It's not something we love. We can give it away tomorrow if God say give it away because it's nothing. And this is where many people are stuck today. And I know out there that there is many of you out there who have been blinded by the deceitfulness of riches, the love of money, the desire of other things have right now done that you don't bear fruit. And if this is where you are, you need to do something about it and i encourage everybody of you to create a life where you bear fruit and the way you create that life is by taking some radical decision about your life about how you live don't be deceived come in and bear good fruit what have value today? What, what do we really have? Do a car have a value? Do money on a bank, bank account have value? No. What, what have value? God. It's all about God. And then it's all about people. It's all about God. And then it's all about souls. The only thing we can take with us from this world is souls. People and this is our salary. <laughs> I'm often when I'm out having me, but I have people who have got saved. I look at them and say, This is my salary. It's not the money. <laughs> this is my salary. This is what we work for. We don't work for the money. We don't work for a house, for a car, those things. No, we work for this. <laughs> we work for souls. And I know there is so many people who long for this. And I just want to encourage you, look at your life. Don't think that everything is also only spiritual. The way that, that, that if you just get enough uh, Holy Spirit or something, then everything's going to break through and everything's going to be so amazed. No, you have to deal with the physical things around you. The physical things have a spiritual impact. And the longing, the desire of riches, the longing for other things kill that many people bear fruit. And we have very often many years going around where other people just went on holiday and used the money and do this and do that and do that, where we didn't do it. Where we were like, no, let's first see the kingdom of God, seek him and see what he will give to us. And then do God's will. And then the other things may come if it comes. Because we are not going to seek that. We are going to seek God. We are going to seek his 
kingdom. I want to tell you something, a testimony, a very amazing testimony I experienced uh, two years ago. I'm never going to forget it. And it's a testimony who have been, become strong for me to show value again. What have value? I want to go back when I was a kid, when I was younger, I dreamt about saving a person's life. Try to save a person's life. To do a different in a person's life, not just to live, not just to exist, but really change something, do something. And and I at that time I was I didn't have any exciting life. I was watching TV the whole day long and with my uh, chips and and soda and sitting there and dreaming of something else, but I didn't know what. But I was dreaming about saving a person's life doing a different in other people's lives, life. So I wanted to be a fireman and I imagine try to be a fireman with a house that's burning and you take a little shine and you walk out with her and you have saved a person's life for a burning house. And that person would always be thankful to you for what you have done. I was like dreaming about that. So later when um, I was supposed to go in the army. I decided to go in a pl uh, place where I could be become a fireman. So when I was in the army, I became a fireman. I got the f education as a fireman. And I, I never worked at it, but, but I just wanted to have it to experience and maybe try to imagine could save a person's life one day. But two years ago, I got the chance to save a person's life. Now we're not talking about a spiritual salvation, we are talking about a physical salvation, <laughs> if we can say that. Two years ago there was a person I saved, not from a burning house, but for, for, from a freezing cold. Two years ago we were out here in Denmark in February month, the month of February, and it was really, really cold. And we were in a, a small vacation place where we had a small uh, flat we have rented. And one day we were there, my kids came, our kids came home and said, the police is here, the police is here, there is somebody who's lost. And I said, like, what happened? I don't know, the police and dogs and everybody's there in the reception area and somebody's lost. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, if somebody is lost, then God can find them. So I said to my wife, Lynn, Lynn, I just go and look. Okay. So I took a lot of clothes on me because it was really cold. It was snowing and the wind was cold. I don't know, it felt like 15, minus 15 degrees or something. It was cold. And I walked out there and then I walked into the reception area. And there was a police car and dogs and two policemen and a lot of people going around, a, a woman almost crying, a lot of things was happening. And I came there and there was a woman, I said, uh, who are you looking for? And as immediately I said that, she was like, my stepdaughter, have you found her? And I was like, no, no, relax, relax, no, no, but I, but, but I want to help, who are you looking for? Oh, oh, and she said, my, my stepdaughter, she's 14 years old. She ran out this morning in the snow without shoes, without a jacket, without anything almost, just trousers and a t-shirt, and, and she's gone, we cannot find her. And, uh, yeah, and she was totally out of it. I said, relax, relax, relax. I I'm going to go out and look for her. And then she said, then you need my telephone number. Okay, okay, okay. And I got her telephone number. I said, I I'm going out to look. And she was really out of it. And we understand that, of course. And I went out and it was like nine in the evening and it was dark outside. And I went out there. And then I called my wife, Lene, and said, Lene is a 14 years old girl who's lost out there. Can you pray God can find her? So my wife started to pray and then I stopped and I looked up and said, God, where are she? Holy Spirit, you can help me. You can lead me. You know, know where she are. And I was standing there and praying and then I got, there came an idea. Go around the building this way. Go there. So I went around the building and I went outside where it was close to the ocean. There was a lot of hills like this 
with high grass and, and you can walk there and, and it was really like cold and grass and hills and there was small path you could walk on and then the water and the ocean and, 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 and really cold. And I was standing there then, okay, where has he got? Holy Spirit. This way. So I was starting to walk. And it was so special because I could all only see just around me where I was walking. And I could see with the hills where the sun was going down. So I could see the top of the hills, but I could not see what was on the ground laying a few meters from me. But I was walking and I, had, I only walked 10, meter, you know, 10 minutes or 5 minutes. And I was walking, God, where are you? And then I stopped, where are you? And I looked around and there I saw something. Right there, there was a hill, and I saw something was moving. And I was like, there, this is her. So I ran there and shouted, is there anybody? But nobody answered. So I continued running, running there, and I came there and I shouted, hello, is there anybody? And then I heard a voice crying back, who are you? And I shouted, I'm here to find you. And I took the telephone up to try to call, but there was no connection out there in the, yeah, with the ocean. So nobody took the telephone. So I continue and I ran up to her and I only, and it was so amazing. I only saw her because there was a little light and I came from this area and there was a hill. Otherwise I could not see that person, but there I found her. And I came to her and when I came, there was a girl this tall with trousers and a t-shirt where you can see the, some of the stomach and then she have socks on, no shoes and then she have snow up at the legs and she was shaking and she was almost blue. And I came there, hey, hey, I, I have you. And then she fall down <laughs> and I took her up, C come up, come up. And I took her, C come, let's go back. And I walked only a few meter with her and then she fainted and she was gone. And she was laying there and, and, and she was like, she was, yeah, she had fainted. And I was there and, and no connection with the telephone and, and I was like, oh God. So I took her up and tried to put, take her up, but she was falling down and she was like a bag of potatoes. But in the end I got her up and I got her up on my shoulder and she was laying on the shoulder. And then I walked with her back. And I was coming from outside the hill and the ocean. I could see the reception area. And when I came back, I could see the police was there and they were talking the telephone and a lot of things were happening and talking with people about what was happening and who the girl was. And I was walking with her from outside the dark. And it was so amazing experience. And I came there and then I had her and I knocked at the window. And then they turned around and they saw me with this girl on my shoulder. And they're like, oh, and came and tried to open the door, but they could not open the door because it was an emergency door. And they came again and tried to get somebody to open the door and move a lot of plants. And in the end, they tried to, they got the door open, but they could not open completely because there was some stones outside because they were building something. And I was saying, come on, come on. And then they opened the door and I came in with this girl in my arms. And I lay her on the sofa. And we very fast got her clothes, trousers and t-shirt. It was wet, it was cold, off her and pillows and blankets and put it on her. And, and, and then she came to herself and she started to have cramps. But she lay there and she got the heat and, and she felt good. <laughs> And the mother was sitting down crying and the police took me beside and said, hey, hey, we need to have your information. Where do you find her? And there, there. And, 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 and the husband came and how did you find her? We have been out looking all over. The how did you find her? And everybody came and suddenly there was like eight, ten people around me and was asking me about how and what happened. And then like, you don't, it's not me you need to thank. You need to thank God. I'm a Christian. And then I told a story about how we was home and the kids came and I went there, I called my wife and said, Lena, pray and God led me directly to her. And I found her and I came with her and, uh, and they got my card and I shared the testimony to them. 
But it was a really strong experience. And I, I remember that time I shared on Facebook, I believe it's one of the things I've shared that have been shared most time because it, 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 was, it was really amazing to experience that. But this girl, if she had fallen down one more time or fainted there, she would not come up again. And it was minus like 15 degrees or something with the wind. And she was laying with almost only a little clothes, wet clothes on, in a place where it was not easy to find her. But God led me, the Holy Spirit led me to her. And because of that, I got the experience of saving a person that way. But you know something interesting? When I got that experience, it was not much stronger. It was not stronger than to see people saved. Because we are working for a kingdom of God that is eternal. These people, this girl, if she's, yes, she got saved that day. But if she's later not repentant, she's still going to Paris in the future. But we now have a responsibility to save people. People are dying around us every day. And they're going to die for eternity if they're not getting saved. And we can save them. What is more worth? What is a soul worth for you? Do you rather have a new kitchen in your house than see soul saved? Do you rather have a new car than see soul saved? What do you want to use your money and your time for? And I want to say that we cannot do everything. We cannot see everything as this world is seeking and at the same time be good ground and bear a lot of fruit. What do you do with the things? And when Jesus called his disciples, he wanted everything for them. And I believe there is people out there like us that some years ago was there. We are not willing. You know, we, we were deceived. We were living like every other person because we thought we should be like the church, like people around us. And we didn't bear fruit. Nobody bear fruit in our church at that time almost. It was like that. It's like that in many churches today. Many churches today never see people saved. Or only a few people saved. But when we changed, when we took everything and gave it up to Christ and say, you can have it all, I will do exactly what you tell us to. What you tell us to. We will live a simple life. We will do what you say. Then everything changed in our life. From one moment, it was like God took us again from a period where we have been like this ground and we became like there and bear a lot of fruit. Where are you? What kind of ground are you? And I can say with everything like the Pioneer School, now you have heard the Pioneer School. You have heard the teaching, 20 lessons. You have heard what Jesus has called us to. You have read it in his word. Some of you will, may, will say, okay, it was fine. Fine, it was good. And it's like Satan immediately come and steal everything you have heard. You're not going to, it's not going to change you. You're not going to act on it. And it was just this. And you are like this ground who don't bear fruit. Some other of you is going to hear and say, yes, this is what I want. This is what I've been longing for many, many years. A reformation of the church. Come on, let's do it. And immediately you start to go against the church system. Immediately you start to go against the religious classes. People have on and start to live different. 
People with their glasses going to look at you. Hey, who are you? What are you doing? No, 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 no. We have always done it like this. You cannot start to do this. No, you cannot baptize people. You are not a priest. No, you cannot do this. You cannot do this. And you are experiencing a lot of persecution. And many of you, because of the persecution from the church, from the family, from people around you, the teaching from the pioneer school is not going to change your life. I will hope, of course, that everybody of you will bear good fruit. So some of you, and some of some of you is going to receive it, but the persecution is no, 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 no. I'm I'm not willing to pay that price. And then you just accept it, and you go in, and you continue doing the things you have always done, and it don't change the things. It don't bear fruit. Then all I again of you say, yes, this is what we do. But you then see that you don't have time for it. And if you need to create more time, you need to put yourself in a place where you need to live for less money or need to earn money in a different way so you can create more time. If you want the best of the best, you have to work for it and you have to pay for it. So many of you need to say, okay, it's going to cost. It's going to cost to live different. It's going to, uh, am I willing to say goodbye to my summer holiday and use that instead of going on mission and focus on this? And maybe say, no, 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 I, I want this. I have a longing for other things at the same time. And because of the longing for other things, because you want to live like the rest of the world, it's not going to change you. It's not going to bear fruit. But I believe also that this teaching is going to fall on good ground. It's going to fall on you who receive it. You who's not afraid of persecution or when persecution come, you just continue because you read what Jesus is saying, have they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. So you know it's the a part of serving God. You're not afraid of it because you know it's part of being a disciple of Jesus. Persecution is part of it. You are not afraid of paying the price. You're not afraid of giving up everything. Why? Because you came naked to this world and you're going away from this world naked. You, you, you cannot take anything with you in, in, the hev in heaven. You, you have to leave everything behind. It's not just something that's dead. Dead things. Dead things. It's not important. What is important is life, is souls. And you have that longing for God and have that longing for souls. And you are going to do something about it. And I'm sure that you are going to bear fruit because this is what the word is saying. And I, I, I believe we need to talk about this. What Jesus is saying here. And we need to. Don't take it personally. When people fall away. Don't say that, okay, maybe I should then compromise and do something about it. No. This is what the church have done today. The church today in many ways is a big compromise. The church today is a compromise where they try everything they can to keep people away from persecution. No, you don't need to do that. You don't need to be so radical. Come on. And keep him away and say, no, you don't need to pay anything to follow Jesus. We can just come here and everything is nice and we pay our immensely and do and you can live your own life. And this is somehow what we have done. And it don't bear fruit. What I do today, the last years, I have spread the word out to many people. Many experience this. I don't take it personally. It's part of the kingdom of God. Other people experience 
that he's growing up. But then persecution is coming for the family and friends and other, and they're falling away. I don't take it personally. I don't, don't go running after them and say that, okay, 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 you don't have to do that. You don't have to pay a price. Don't have to be like that. No. Because this is how the kingdom of God is working. Jesus has told us that. Other people follow with us a certain amount of time. And it seems like, yes, they are good fruit. A lot of things is happening in them. It's growing. It's really growing. But then they don't have time and they get a new job where they need to work a lot of more hours per week so they can do this and do this. And suddenly you don't see them anymore. I don't take it personally. I just want to focus on what God has called me to. I want to bear fruit. I want to be good ground. And then I want to find those people who are good ground. Those people who bear fruit. And I want to invest everything I can invest in them. Because I know when I invest in them, it's going to bear 3,000, 6,000 or 10,000 percent back. And this is good soil. But we cannot always see what good soil are first after a certain time. But when you really see good soil, then invest in them. And this is somehow also what Jesus is saying, go out, find a person of peace. Go out, spread your seed all over the place. Take your seed, the word of God, and spread it all over the place. And some people, it touch their heart and say, no, it's not me. And it's like Satan have steal it. Other people, they receive it, they're glad, but at the same time, persecution come and they know it's not me. I'm not willing to pay the price. And other people again, they receive it, but they're not willing because of riches. They're deceived of this world. But there, there is the people who bear fruit. And that person is going to bear a lot of fruit. I believe this is so important to end up with this teaching because we have talked about many other things. I don't know what ground you are. Time would show. But you know what you need to be careful of. Persecution and riches, desire lost of other things in this world. But don't let persecution stop you. <laughs> don't let the desire of other things hinder you in bearing fruit. If you continue on, you're going to bear a lot of fruit. And it's going to not only change your life, it's going to change many people's lives around you. Okay, it was what I, I want to share this time. don't want to do it so much longer because you have heard a lot of things. Now you have to decide where are you in your life. You need to be good ground. This is what God wants us to. God wants us, everybody of us, to bear fruit. And sometimes we need to go through things to be good ground. Maybe you are in a period where you love things and God are working in you and you need to come to a point where things don't have any value in you. And this is the way the Holy Spirit is working. And we are so happy that we went through a desert some years ago because there we learned something new. I want to say that everything is about a walk with God. It's about discipleship. And I believe that the Pioneer School can help you in the next step to come in to live the life God has for you. Now it's time to do it. I encourage you to take the next two months, as I talked about last time, and then start to do it. Show that you are good ground. Show that you bear fruit. Do something about the word you have heard in the pioneer school and spread it to all the people you know. And by that, let's see a reformation of the church. I have my wife here who have been singing and we have also heard a lot of testimony for people who have been blessed through her songs. And we just from here as a family want to thank you. Thank you for your prayer. Thank you for your support to, to Lene and to me. 
Uh, this is pioneer work we are doing and, and we need you out there to support us, to continue praying for us because together we can really see a change all over the world. And we want to thank you right now, when we are finished with this video, we are going to pack everything down here and we are going to move to a new city. In uh, next week we are moving and there we're, we are going to start our base, our platform and do a lot of things out of there. So next time you're going to see us, a lot of new things is happening and we are in a new city and a lot of new things is going to happen. And uh, we are going to write it to you on the, you who need, receive the newsletter, the Pioneer School. So have you not signed up yet? I know many people are just following the teacher and have not signed up then go to the last reformation and sign up. People can always continue signing up because when you sign up, you're going to get information of all the new things that are going to happen. So we just want to say goodbye. Yeah, bye. <laughs> bye oh, um, and thank you for everything and uh, God bless you and see you out there. Bye bye.